So does the stainless steel skillet actually need seasoning? Well, in this video, I'm gonna take two of my skillets and I'm gonna season one of them based on a leading manufacturer's instructions, and I'm gonna leave the second one completely alone, untouched. And then we're gonna compare the two and we're gonna find out if seasoning a stainless steel skillet actually makes them more non-stick and easier to clean, or if it's completely fluff. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's start off with some background. Personally, I've never had any issues once I got the hang of stainless steel with sticking or even trouble really cleaning them. Now, of course, compared to carbon steel or cast iron, yes, stainless steel is more prone to sticking and yes, it is harder to clean compared to those pants. But once you get the fundamentals down and you figure out how to properly preheat your skillet and preheat your oil, you start kind of getting used to it and stainless steel actually becomes really, really fun to use and surprisingly very non-stick. Now it's important to remember stainless steel is prone to sticking somewhat because it's really good for developing fond. Now those of you that don't know what fond is, it's basically the sticky bits that are left over on a skillet and you can take those sticky bits and end up making a delicious sauce out of it. So yes, stainless steel is a bit more prone to sticking and it can become a huge stick machine if you don't properly preheat them and understand the basics and the fundamentals. But don't worry, because I got you guys covered. If you haven't already, go watch my videos on stainless steel cooking. I have one specifically about the fundamentals where I go over how to preheat them, what is fond, how to make sauces out of fond, and even how to clean a really sticky mess. And then I also have some other videos comparing stainless steel to carbon steel and cast iron specifically a steak video where we kind of compare which one sears better. So I have a whole playlist on skillets and pans. So definitely go check them out, especially if you're new to stainless steel cooking or cooking in general. So here's some background. I gotta admit, when I first started off, I was a huge cast iron skillet guy. I mean, everything cast iron I wanted and I loved. And then I moved on to carbon steel. And carbon steel pans are still my favorite form of cooking. I really like the features that it has. It's basically a middle ground between cast iron and stainless steel. Carbon steel and cast iron do have their limits and that's where stainless steel comes in. Now I've replied to some of your guys' comments and told you guys that stainless steel has definitely grown on me as I got older and better at cooking. And that's absolutely true. In the last year, maybe a year and a half, I've really enjoyed using my stainless steel skillets and I've picked them up more times than not, especially during the pandemic because I've kind of explored other cultures and other cooking styles and cuisines where I want to make sauces and develop a different type of cooking. And stainless steel is amazing for that. Now, I don't want to give the wrong impressions. When I started off, I hated stainless steel. It stuck like crazy. I didn't know how to use them properly. And it just seemed like they were more work than they were, you know, actually doing anything for me. And then of course the cleaning process became just horrendous because everything stuck so it took way longer to clean things and the whole point of stainless steel at least for me was they didn't rust so cleaning was supposed to be easier and a little bit more streamlined compared to carbon steel or cast iron. Well I quickly realized that wiping away cast iron and carbon steel was a lot easier than cleaning stainless steel and taking that extra couple of minutes after you know washing cast iron or carbon steel to preheat them again and evaporate all the moisture was way more worth it than spending 20, 30 minutes scrubbing a stainless steel pan if I was lucky and barely getting it clean. So I definitely struggled with stainless steel in the beginning, but as I became more and more comfortable with them and learned how to use them, I just absolutely love them now. So in the comments of some of my videos, I've been hearing a lot from you guys saying, hey, can you season a stainless steel skillet and does it do anything for you? That's a great question because I've never had to season a stainless steel skillet at all. I've bought new skillets recently, never seasoned them, and they work just fine. And to be quite honest with you, they're really non-stick. I have no problem cooking scrambled eggs in the fundamentals video that I mentioned earlier. I show you guys that I can cook a scrambled egg with no problem and literally blow it out of the skillet and it was completely fine. Cleanup has gotten way better. Occasionally we will have a mess where, you know, we'll have some carbon buildup or food that just burnt over, but nothing too crazy. I mean, a plastic 
brush and maybe a minute or two in the sink with some hot water will definitely take care of it. I'm actually thinking about making a future video where I show you guys different techniques specifically for cleaning stainless steel and what actually works and what actually doesn't. One of my favorite things to use is Barkeeper's Friend, but there's some other really cool techniques that I've learned in the last two years, especially for a really sticky mess that gets the job done. One of them, which I've mentioned before, was boiling some water and treating everything like fond, and that usually does the trick. But there's some other really cool techniques that I've learned about. So if you guys are interested, comment below and let me know if you wanna see that video, and I'll be more than happy to shoot it for you. Okay, so we're not gonna get into, you know, details of stainless steel cooking. Like I said, I have a video, go check that out. If you don't know some terminologies like seasoning, a skillet, or fond, if you really don't have the time, I'll make it real quick. Seasoning a skillet just means adding some oil in the skillet and heating the skillet past the oil smoking point to get that oil to start smoking and absorb completely into the skillet. So you develop a nice thin film of oil which ends up turning into a nice slick surface which is a seasoned surface that helps with sticking. In carbon steel and cast iron, it's really effective and it literally turns those pans into a hockey puck sliding machine. Now there is one more term that I wanna to talk to you guys about and that's called the light and frost effect or the mercury ball effect. When a surface is so hot, way hotter than a liquid's boiling point, you end up getting this really cool effect where that liquid or that droplet will actually hover on the surface of the skillet and it looks like it's floating around. Scientifically, what's basically happening is as soon as that water droplet hits the surface of the pan, the pan is so hot, way hotter than the boiling point of the water, that the initial contact that the water droplet has with the surface of the skillet causes that contact to vaporize almost immediately. And what ends up happening is that bottom portion of the droplet has vaporized and you have this gas that's sitting on the surface of the skillet with the water liquid on top. So basically that water drop, the liquid portion, is actually floating on its own vapors. And that's what actually causes the lighting frost effect. So what are the benefits of the lighting frost effect? Well, a lot of people claim that if you take some water and you throw it in your skillet and it beads up into that mercury ball effect, your skillet is now properly preheated. And you can now add your oil, let your oil get up to operating temperature just before you start seeing it smoke. And theoretically, everything in there should not stick because the skillet has been preheated. Stainless steel is a little bit unforgiving. You have to find that sweet spot or, you know, it can be a disaster. But once you learn on them, once you get the hang of it, you can find that sweet spot. And there is a bit of a window. So don't be too afraid. Carbon steel and cast iron are different. They're a little bit more forgiving. So there was two popular methods that I found for seasoning a stainless steel skillet. And the first method involved a lot of oil. It was almost like you were trying to deep fry something. But basically the first method's instructions said to preheat the skillet on low to medium low heat and let the skillet get up to operating temperatures, let the pores you know, open up on the stainless steel. And then you would add a pretty considerable amount of oil. And the instructions said, just to make sure the entire surface was completely covered at all times. And then you would let that oil heat up until it started to smoke. Once you saw it just about smoking, let it smoke for about five to 10 seconds more, and then turn off the stove, take the skillet off of the hot burner, place it on a cooler burner, and let the whole thing cool down to room temperature on its own. Once it's cooled down to room temperature, throw out all the oil, wipe off all the excessive oil, and theoretically you had a seasoned skillet. Method number two basically said to do the same thing but with a lot less oil. And I thought method number two made more sense. It was a lot like seasoning a cast iron or carbon steel skillet. And for both methods, you pretty much get them to the light and frost effect where you get the mercury ball test. And then you add your oil, but this time when you add your oil, you wanna add just enough to get a nice thin layer on the whole skillet. So it's a lot like carbon steel. You're gonna add a couple of drops or so, and then you're gonna take the paper towel and you're gonna wipe the oil and get a nice, thin, consistent layer on the entire inside of the skillet. And then you let the skillet heat up until you see the oil just smoking. Wait about five seconds or so after you see some smoke, turn off the stove, take the skillet off the hot burner and place it on a cooler burner and let the entire thing cool to room temperature, which is usually about an hour or so just to be safe. And just make sure it's completely cool to the touch and you're good to go. 
I like method number two a lot more. It made more sense to me. So that's the method I'm gonna do. Okay, and then I seasoned my all clad three ply stainless steel skillet and I left my Amazon basics three ply stainless steel skillet completely alone. I gave the edge to the seasoned skillet, the all clad, the higher quality skillet. And I compared it to my non seasoned Amazon commercial three ply budget friendly stainless steel skillet. And I figured this would be a really good test because if the all clad had any hiccups whatsoever, I knew something was wrong. And that's exactly what happened. The results were surprising and kind of alarming. I fried an egg in each skillet and the seasoned all clad stainless steel skillet stuck more than my non seasoned Amazon basics budget friendly stainless steel skillet. I knew something was wrong. I figured I probably didn't do things right or maybe I had too much oil. Upon further examination of the all clad skillet, I saw that the surface had some sticky residue left over. Now from past experiences using carbon steel or cast iron and seasoning those skillets, when that happens, one of two things probably occurred. The first possibility is you used way too much oil and you actually got a thin film of oil residue on the surface and you didn't actually season your skillet. I don't think that's what happened because I did use a thin layer of oil and I made sure to wipe off all the excess of oil, you know, when the skillet was done and it was smooth and everything was nice. The second possibility is your skillet was dirty to begin with. The surface wasn't completely clean and I think that's what happened. So I store my skillets hanging on top of my stovetop and admittedly that's not the best place to hang my skillets because they're right above my stovetop and sometimes when I'm cooking some grease or oil splatter will actually get to the skillets. And when I began this method, I didn't properly wash both skillets. I was a bit excited, so I kind of just wiped them and dove right in. So I think that's what happened. The skillet surfaces were probably dirty with the frying oil and you know splatter. And then when I did everything, it didn't work out. I cleaned the all clad completely using Barkeeper's Friend. I made sure it was just mirror finish clean and I redid the seasoning process and retested everything. It's important to note, both times I ran the test, I made sure to do the light and frost effect, the mercury ball test before I started anything. And I never do that. Admittedly, I never do that. So it was weird because it wasn't my normal flow. But when I ran the test again, things were a lot better. The all clad was not sticking anywhere near as bad as it did previously, but I was still really surprised because compared to the non-seasoned Amazon basic skillet, it was pretty much performing almost identical with one caveat. I noticed that the carbon buildup or the fond that was left over with the all clad was a lot more flakier and was coming off a lot easier. Even when I was cooking, I was actually tempted to take like a wooden, you know, spatula and just see if it flicks off compared to the Amazon Basics non-season skillet. But as far as non-stick goes, they were pretty identical. I mean, maybe I would give the all clad a slight advantage. Maybe it was a bit more non-stick, but not by much, nothing like drastic, like carbon steel or stainless steel. It acted like a stainless steel skillet. Now, I wanted to repeat the test one more time, but this time not doing the mercury ball test, just, you know, going off of my basic instincts and seeing if that made a difference or not. And I got pretty much the same result. Did the seasoning make a difference? As far as nonstick goes, I don't know. They were both pretty comparable, but this actually made me a bit curious and I had another question to figure out if seasoning made a difference or not. And if it did, if you washed a pan, were you washing away the seasoning? Did you have to basically start over every time you picked up your stainless steel skillet? Did you have to season it, you know, ahead of time or at least once a week or whatever? I ended up washing the all clad like I always do with some light soap and water and, you know, drying it off and putting it back for another test. Now this did two things. I wanted to see if seasoning a skillet actually made it easier to clean, number one. And number two, I wanted to find out if cleaning your skillet removed the seasoning and you had to start over. And there was something really, really noticeable. The all clad was a lot easier to clean than the Amazon basic skillet. Now the Amazon skillet wasn't terrible to clean, but the all clad was definitely a lot easier, a lot faster, and there wasn't so much work involved. And what I suspected while running the test was true. The fawn sticky bits were flaking off really, really easily. That plastic brush that I love using was handling it just fine. 
and it really resembled a carbon steel or cast iron skillet. I mean, I was actually surprised. Seasoning the skillet made it a lot easier to clean. So anyways, I cleaned the all clad with soap and warm water, completely dried it, put it back on the stove top for another test. So now this is gonna be the third time that I've tested the all clad seasoned skillet that's just been washed versus the Amazon Basics non-seasoned skillet that's also been washed. And again, for non-stick purposes, the results were almost identical. I didn't see a difference, and I can't say that one was more non-stick than the other. So this led me to another idea. I wanted to make my green and red salsa. If you guys haven't already, go watch my video where I show you guys how I made King Taco's famous green salsa and red salsa. And for both methods, you have to roast your tomatoes, tomatillos, and chilies. Red tomatoes can become a really big sticky mess, but for those of you that don't know, tomatillos are even worse because they're really, really acidic. Now I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, there's no way I would ever do this on my cast iron or carbon steel skillets. Well, you're wrong. I exclusively roast these tomatoes on my cast iron or carbon steel skillets because they're so non-stick and I never have to worry about a sticky mess. And guess what? the seasoning never flaked. I've never lost the seasoning on my cast iron or carbon steel skillets when doing this. So that's just proof that you can cook acidic foods, just not in really long liquid durations in the oven. So back to my point, I never really did it on stainless steel skillets, not necessarily because they stuck. Over the years, I kind of figured out how to not, you know, get them to stick so bad, but it's because of the fond, the burnt residue, the carbon buildup that would, you know, result from cooking the chilies and the tomatillos and the tomatoes, was just a big sticky mess. And previously in a stainless steel skillet, anytime I did this, I always had to boil some water to get all that stuff out because it would just be a nightmare to clean. So I figured this would be a perfect way to test my suspicions that seasoning a stainless steel skillet may or may not necessarily make it more non-stick, but it might actually make it way easier to clean. So I roasted my tomatillos, my tomatoes, my chilies for my green salsa. And then I did onions and red tomatoes for my red salsa. And I made sure not to clean anything in between. I really wanted those sticky bits to burn and just make a really sticky mess to see if it's any easier to clean. And the results were very surprising. After everything was said and done, all that carbon buildup in the skillet, all that fawn that burnt throughout the entire process of roasting the tomatoes and the chilies and the tomatillos for the salsa, when it came time to clean it, it was a lot easier. I noticed that all that burnt carbon buildup and that fawn that would previously infuse with the stainless steel skillet if I tried this before, was actually coming off. And it wasn't like carbon steel or cast iron status, but it was a big difference. And I was using my plastic brush and most of it was coming off and I didn't have to boil the skillet. That definitely said something to me because I would never let that happen before. I knew if that happened previously on a stainless steel skillet, I had to boil that skillet for a couple of minutes, take a wooden spatula and scrape that stuff off like it was fond for a sauce to really clean it. So what are my final thoughts? What are my conclusions? Does seasoning a stainless steel skillet make a big difference? The answer is, it depends. If you're trying to season your stainless steel skillet to make it more non-stick and resemble a cast iron or carbon steel skillet, I didn't see a difference. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. If it does, it's very minimal. I think you're better off focusing on the fundamentals of stainless steel cooking. Make sure your skillet is properly preheated. Make sure your oil's preheated. You might have some problems initially, but once you get the hang of it and you learn how to use your skillet, it's just like anything else. The more that you use it, the better you get at it. You'll figure it out. One day you'll just figure out that sweet spot and you'll know how to use your skillet. I think for non-stick purposes, seasoning your skillet really doesn't make too much of a difference. I know, I know, a lot of you guys out there are gonna leave me nasty comments below saying, seasoning a stainless steel skillet makes it more non-stick than a cast iron or carbon steel pan. And that's fine. You may be doing something that I was missing. I don't know, maybe I did something wrong, maybe I didn't season it correctly, maybe I should have used the first method and add a bunch of oil and, you know, season it that way. Now, if you're looking to season your stainless steel skillet specifically to help you with cleanup, then I think it does make a difference. And it is a considerable difference. But keep in mind, it's not gonna magically make a stainless steel skillet a carbon steel or cast iron skillet. Stainless steel is known for fond. You have to remember that. And don't confuse fond 
with sticking. A stainless steel skillet can still be non-stick and release your food properly, but still develop fond. And I know that may be confusing, but that's what it is. A stainless steel skillet just develops fond. A lot of you guys out there, especially when you're leaving me comments, you seem to think that non-stick means absolutely nothing left over in the pan and not necessarily the food being released properly. And some of you guys are even thinking that non-stick means you don't have to use any oil and still use your pan. That's not non-stick, that's just specifically not using any oil or not using any fat for your cooking. I think it's called like no oil cooking or no fat cooking. Carbon steel and cast iron will still leave things over. And those sticky bits are usually seasoning, like food seasoning. So there's always gonna be leftover carbon to clean and it might be easier with some pans than others. Carbon steel and cast iron, you can oftentimes just wipe it away and that's good enough. With stainless steel, that's not the case. So non-stick doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you have to clean it, therefore it's sticking. Sticking just means that when you put your food in there, whatever it may be, your proteins or your meats or whatever, and it's time to flip it, the skillet properly releases that food and you don't end up tearing the food away as you're trying to flip it. And stainless steel can be very non-stick, but it's known for leaving fond behind. And I think seasoning a stainless steel skillet definitely makes it a lot easier to clean later on, especially if you're not looking to deglaze the pan and make a sauce out of the font. That's it for me guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you guys on the next one. Take care everybody. Hey everybody. How'd you guys like that last video? Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified of my next video. And if you can, please share with your family and friends. I would really appreciate it. Here's some more content that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. Check them out. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.